Hi, welcome to story time. I am still here at my house doing story time because it's a little bit quieter than in the library because we are open again. So if you haven't come to the library, come see us. And um, we're going to start with um, exploring some of our grab and go bags that we have here at the library. Now, there are um, three main branches in Sweetwater County. There's the Sweetwater County branch in Green River, the Rock Springs branch that is on C Street um, downtown Rock Springs, and there's the White Mountain branch that is behind the mall. I believe it's on Dewar, behind the mall. Um, and so I have some of the grab and go bags and I have the one from White Mountain with me today. So let's take everything out of it and look and see what we get. So I have a paper bag and then what does this look like? A frog. <laughs> and oh, here's a picture of the craft that we can make with everything in the bag. So it looks like hmm, there's a tongue and I think that's a balloon. Let's see, is there a balloon in here? There is, it's pink. Oh, and I think this is an eyeball. Awesome. And I see that there's even a cut in the frog's mouth. So I think you can put the balloon through and blow it up really big and maybe let go of it and it'll make a really funny sound. And let's see what else is in here. There's a whole activity pack. Hmm, it's kind of bright in here today if you can't see this. But this one, you color and you finish the frog. And there's a word search, which is one of my favorite things to do. I have a whole Harry Potter word search book. Spot the difference, which is really fun. I see one right away. Let's see, can you see that? So you can stop by the White Mountain Library and pick this up. And it comes with everything that you need to do some fun stuff this week. And I know the one at the Rock Springs Library, they have in their grab and go bags, a big poster that you can color and they are really cool. And then here is the grab and go bag that we have in Green River at the Sweetwater County Library. And inside our bag, there's a moon lander. And this is my daughter, Mika. She is going to try and make this STEM moon lander. And after I read some books, we're going to see if she was successful and if she can protect her astronauts. So let's open this up and I'll give Mika all the supplies that she'll need. Now, I like projects like this because um, even if it doesn't work the first time, you're going to try it again. All right. So in the bag, we have three different outer space activities. Here's two in each bag. So there's a Galaxy Gazette in this one, and there's lots of word things and memory games and star name matching. And then we have a poster in this one too. It's pretty big. You can color a poster. And the third activity is a really fun placemat that says a universe of stories. And in every bag, until we run out, there's going to be a NASA sticker. All right, but the STEM moon lander project. Are you ready, Mika? Yeah, all right. There's instructions. And you're going to want to read the instructions. But we have eight straws. There is some tape. So we put tape in. And so um, you don't have to worry about not having tape at home. And every lander has three rubber bands. So you're going to want to think about maybe how you can use those. And three note cards. And then we need astronauts. And I have a green astronaut and a white astronaut. And there are some little tiny astronauts inside. And so what you're going to do is you're going to use these supplies and you need to think about a way of protecting your astronauts inside the cup. You can't cover the top up. That's cheating. You have to build around the outside different things that might slow down the moon lander as it rushes to the base of the moon. 
because um, we have to protect our astronauts. So you can build springs, you can build a parachute, you can think of a way of absorbing the shock when you drop this. And actually, let's show them what happens when you just drop it straight into the air. How's that sound? So we have our astronauts inside. You ready? Okay, so we'll turn this. All right. Okay, let's see what happens when you drop it. Oh, no. Can you see? All of the astronauts fell out. All right, so I'm going to give Mika all of the supplies, and we are going to read some stories. Here we go. All right. Good luck. They're really fun to build, and there's so many different ways of building them. Um, I built one, and my ideas were totally different. So let's read some stories. And I think... Hmm. Let's read this one because there's a Moonlander in this one, and it's called Roaring Rockets, and it's by Tony Mitten and Aunt Parker. Roaring Rocket. You can see they have all of their suits and supplies. They are ready to go. Wow! Rockets have power, and they rise and roar. This rocket's waiting, ready to soar. Rockets carry astronauts with cool white suits, oxygen helmets, and gravity boots. There's a lot of things inside of a rocket. Whoosh! The countdown is finished. Three, two, one. Action! Blast off! The journey's begun. And there is the moon where they're going. Rockets have fuel in great big tanks. When they're empty, they drop away. Thanks. Do you see the empty rocket fuel right there? It's pretty big. It takes a lot of fuel to go all the way to the moon. Up in space, you're really light. So astronauts need to buckle up tight. Do you see? The rat is just floating around inside, but the bird and the rat are both wearing their seatbelts. Rockets go far through space. They zoom, reaching as far as the big round moon. Down comes the lander with legs out ready. They, and fiery boosters to hold it steady. So this is what you're gonna design. Do you see some similarities with our project? There's the base, and our cup didn't have legs, did it? Mm -mm. And here is the part with the cups where the astronauts are inside. So you can think of some ideas for your lander. Out come the astronauts to plant their flag and scoop up samples in their moon rock bag. Rockets explore through space, they zoom, but when they're done, they head back home. Rockets re-enter in a fiery flash to land in the sea with a sizzling splash. The helicopter carries the brave crew away. Three cheers for the astronauts. Hip, hip, hooray! The end. And here are some of the things that were inside of our book. They're gravity boots, there's that lunar lander, and their helmets to help them breathe because there's no oxygen in outer space, and there's that rocket. Very cool. All right, let's read a book that was written by a real astronaut. His name is Mark Kelly, and he went on um, a space mission, the Mission Endeavor, in 2011. And he's gone on a bunch of other sp space flights. And he wrote a book called Mastronauts, an astronaut story about a little mouse. It's very shiny, isn't it? There we go. And it's illustrated by C.F. Payne.
mouse trinot, based on a partially true story. The space shuttle is set. Oh, let's see. I'm going to restart. The space shuttle is ready for a launch, and the astronauts are doing their last minute training to prepare for the mission. Hi, Taylor. Hi, I hope you and Easton are watching. NASA is sending along some special guests for this flight, and they're training too. Can you guess who the special guests are? What are these creatures? They're little mice. One mouse is smaller than the rest. His name is Meteor. The other mice know he won't be chosen for this important mission, but someone has their eye on Meteor, and he's impressed with the little mouse's hard work. Let's look. Here are the other mice. They're talking, and there's Meteor. He's exercising. He's working really hard. The Space Shuttle Commander announces that six mice will be selected for the flight. He picks five of the biggest, strongest mice. But for the six spots, to everyone's surprise, he chooses Meteor. He's surprised too. Whoa. All six are taken to their new home, a special cage called the Mouse Hotel. The other mice are nervous as the countdown begins, but not Meteor. Can you help me count down at home? Ready? We're going to start with 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Liftoff! Look at this picture. There is the space shuttle. And this, that's all fuel like in our last book. Those are huge fuel tanks. At first, the mice are pressed flat against their cage by the power of the launch. But then the pressure goes away. The other mice cling to their cage in terror. Look how scared they are. Oh no, ah! But not Meteor. He loves the feeling of weightlessness. Hey, little guy, the commander says, you're a natural, a real, live mousetronaut. Meteor is taken from his cage and gets a tour of the shuttle. He can even see the earth way off in the distance. Do you think that would be fun to float around in space? I think that'd be really cool. The astronauts are all very busy doing the 14 day flight. There are spacewalks to take and experiments to conduct, but what can Meteor do to help? Then, while answering email, one of the astronauts notices the key to the control panel stuck between the monitors. When he tries to get it, it accidentally gets wedged farther down. Oh no, look, it's tiny. <gasps> this isn't good, says the commander. We need that key back. One astronaut tries to move the monitor. It doesn't budge. Another slips her fingers into the crack, but the key is stuck down too deep. One even tries pushing it out with a long piece of metal, but with no luck. No one can reach it. That's very frustrating, isn't it? Oh, the astronauts are getting worried, but as they discuss the problem, a tiny figure has an idea. Being the smallest isn't a bad thing, Meteor says to himself. Maybe I can be useful on this flight. Do you see 
here in this big book. There he is. He's tiny. Meteor squeezes his way into the crack. The space is dark and cramped, but Meteor spots the key and tugs at it with all his might. Hey, look at what our tiny friend has done, the commander says. He saved the mission. When the shuttle returns to Earth, Meteor is declared a hero. He's even given a brand new uniform and an official title, Mousetronauts. Look at his tiny uniform. All the astronauts cheer and applaud, but Meteor is already thinking about his next big mission. And in the back, the astronaut that wrote this story tells us a little bit more about what he did in outer space and where the idea for this book came from. Um, when he went on one of his space flights, they took mice with them and inside their mouse hotel, like in this book, all the mice were super scared and they all hung on really tight to the cage walls except for one mouse. And that mouse was floating and having a good time. And it gave this astronaut, Mark Kelly, this idea for the story. That's really cool. All right, I only have one more book to read, but let's see if Mika is all done building her moon lander. Hey Mika, are you all done? Not yet? All right, I have one more book. All right, and this book's a little different. It's not about going to the moon, it's about looking at the moon. And this book even won a special award. It won the Caldecott Medal for illustrations, which means the pictures are really, really good. Kevin Henke's Kitten's First Full Moon. It was Kitten's first full moon. When she saw it, she thought, there's a little bowl of milk in the sky, and she wanted it. Mm, kittens like to drink milk. So she closed her eyes and stretched her neck and opened her mouth and licked. But Kitten only ended up with a bug on her tongue. Poor Kitten. Oh no. Still, there was the little bowl of milk just waiting. So she pulled herself together and wiggled her bottom and sprang from the top step of the porch. But Kitten only tumbled, bumping her nose and banging her ear and pinching her tail. Poor Kitten. Oh no. Still, there was the little bowl of milk just waiting. I bet she's thirsty. So she chased it down the sidewalk, through the garden, past the fields, and by the ponds. But Kitten never seemed to get closer. Poor Kitten. Still, there was the little bowl of milk just waiting. Oh, and she's trying to be sneaky now. So she ran to the tallest tree she could find and she climbed and climbed and climbed to the very top. But poor kitten still couldn't reach the bowl of milk and now she was scared. Poor kitten, what could she do? Then in the pond, kitten saw another bowl of milk and it was bigger. What a night. She ran down the tree and raced to the grass and raced to the edge of the pond and she leaped with all her might. Poor kitten. She was wet and sad and tired and hungry. So 
she went back home. And there was a great big bowl of milk on the porch. Just waiting for her. Lucky kitten. The end. The moon is not made of milk, is it? But kitten thought maybe it was full of milk. Hmm. All right, Mika, are you ready? You want to bring it here? And we can finish it together or we could just try it out. Yeah? All right. Let's see what Mika made. Pretty exciting. I know that some kids that came to the library um, a couple days ago when they got their moon landers, they said their first time they built it didn't work. Their astronauts fell out and they had to take some pieces off and they rebuilt it again and they thought really hard about it and then it worked. Oh, all right. So let's see what Mika did. Okay, so I see here on the bottom, she used some pieces of straws and then she made a parachute on top. All right, but there's still lots of room. So if her astronauts come out the top, then I think that's okay. I don't think that that's covering it up. Are you ready to try it? Yeah, these are some good ideas. All right, let's turn the computer. And I'll move my stuff out of the way. All right, let's see. All right, Mika, we're ready. Oh no, it fell over. Hmm, I think maybe, what could you do that would stop it from tipping over? Do you have an idea? What about if you made the base bigger? Hmm, maybe. All right, well, we're gonna have to work on this more and we're gonna have to experiment just like astronauts and all the engineers at NASA do when they're thinking of new ideas. We're gonna have to be scientists. All right, everyone, thank you for joining me for story time. Remember, you can go to all three libraries and get different grab-and-go bags everywhere and have lots of fun this summer and come check out some books. All right, bye everyone.